most significant bit is a function that returns the most significant bit of a number. Imagine a number in its binary representation, a sequence of ones and zeros. This function most significant bit will return the position of the left most one. For example, if we take the number 8, 8 is equal to 2 to the 3, so in the third position, starting at 0, we will have a 1. So if we feed an 8 into this function, we will get a 3 back. In this video, we're going to convert this function using assembly, and by using assembly, we can save about up to 1,500 guess. So to start off with, we'll start with the simple parts. So I'll scroll down, and then first we'll convert this part into assembly. I'll comment this code out, and then we'll start with assembly. Let's start with the easy part. Let's start with this part of the code. Is x greater than or equal to 2? Now inside assembly, we don't have any operations to say greater than or equal to. So instead, we'll use the opcode greater than. So we'll type is x greater than 0x1. Is x greater than 1? If x is greater than 1, then this is the same as asking is x greater than or equal to 2. Now this opcode will return a 1 if x is greater than 1, otherwise it will return a 0. We'll assign the result to a variable, we'll name it f. Short for scaling factor that we'll use in other parts of the code. So I'll say that f is equal to. Now inside assembly, to say equal to, to assign something to a variable, we'll have to put a colon and then an equal sign. So we'll store the result of this comparison. Is x greater than 1? If x is greater than or equal to 2, then we say msb. msb is the result that we're returning from this function. Most significant bit. We add 1 to this. How can we write this part of the code? msp plus equal to 1 using assembly. Well, what we can do is say msp, assign it to, so say colon equals to, add, add to msb. We want to say 1 if this part of the code is true. Otherwise, we want to say 0. Now, luckily, we can do this by adding a f. Why does this work? If x is greater than 1, then this will return a 1. So this part of the code will be adding 1 to msp. Otherwise, if this is 0, then we're adding 0 to msp. In other words, msp does not change. Now, the other modification that I'll make is instead of using add, we'll use the bitwise operator or. The bitwise operator or takes two sequence of bits and it returns a sequence of new bits. It compares each bits of the inputs and returns a 1 if either of the inputs is a 1. Otherwise, if both are 0, then it returns a 0. For example, if the first sequence is 1, 0, 1, 0, and the second sequence is 0, 1, 1, 0, then taking the bitwise OR of the first two inputs, for the first position, we have a 1 and a 0, so it returns a 1. For the next position, there's a 0 and a 1, so it returns a 1. For the next one, it has a 1 and a 1, so the return value is a 1. And for the last position, both are 0, so the result is a 0. And this is the result, the new sequence that is returned, 1, 1, 1, 0. So that is an example of the bitwise operator OR. Now in this case, we can replace the opcode ADD with OR because there won't be any overlap of 1s between MSP and F. So simply taking an OR is just like addition. Okay, so we replaced this part of the code using assembly. So let's now replace this part of the code using assembly. So first I'll comment this code block. And then again, we'll start with assembly. Again, let's start with the easy part. Let's first write this part of the code. Is x greater than or equal to four? We can do that using opcode by typing greater than x, zero x, three is x greater than 3. That is the same as asking is x greater than or equal to 4. Now if x is greater than or equal to 4, then we'll need to shift x to the right by 2, and then to msp we'll need to add 2. So our next step is to create this 2 inside the opcode. Now the result of executing this opcode, if x is greater than 3, then this will return a 1, otherwise it will return a 0. So if this is true, how can we create this number 2? Well, we can do this by shifting the result of this opcode to the left by 1. And we can do that by typing shl shift to the left by 1. The result of evaluating is x greater than 3. If x is greater than 3, then this will return a 1. And shifting 1 over to the left by 1, we'll get a 2. Otherwise, if x is less than or equal to 3, then this code will return a 0. And shifting 0 over to the left by 1, we still get a zero back. And then we'll assign the result to a variable named f. So I'll say that f equal to. 
This variable f will be equal to 2 if this part of the code evaluates to true, otherwise it is equal to 0. So now we can shift x by 2 if x is greater than or equal to 4 by saying x assigned to x colon equals to shift it to the right by f the number x. f is equal to either 2 or 0. If it is equal to 2, then it's the same as executing this part of the code. If it is equal to 0, then x remains as x. So these two part of the code are equivalent to these two part of the code. And then again, we'll update MSB by adding 2 if x is greater than or equal to 4 by typing MSB assign it to or. We can use an add here again, but instead we'll use an or. So or MSB F. We now converted this part of the code into assembly. Let's do the same for this part of the code. Now notice that from this part of the code to this part of the code, the only difference, the logic remains the same and the only difference are the number that's being compared, the number that is being shifted, and the number that is being added to MSP. So the code that we're going to be writing will be similar to this, except it will be different in numbers. So first I'll paste the code. And what we're going to be doing is just changing the numbers around. Let's start with the comparison again. Is x greater than or equal to 0x10? 0x10 is equal to 16 written in hexadecimal notation. Since we cannot do greater than or equal to, we'll need to resort to greater than. So we'll need to do a comparison of 1 less than 16. What is 1 less than 16 in hexadecimal? 1 less than 16 is 15. And in hexadecimal, this will be 0xf. So we'll ask, is x greater than 15? The result of this opcode returns a 1 or a 0. If the result is a 1, we'll need to shift it by some amount so that we get a 4. Starting from 1, how many times will we have to shift it to the left to get 4? If we shift it by once, we get a 2. So if we shift it by twice, we'll get a 4. And notice that for the rest of the code, we don't have to make any change. Okay, so... Let's do one more. Let's convert this part of the code into assembly. Again, the only thing that will change is the numbers. So I'll copy this code, paste it here. And then what we're comparing is, is x greater than or equal to 2 to the 8? 1 less than this will be 2 to the 8 minus 1. Or in hexadecimal, we can put 2 f's. If we add 1 to this, we'll get 0x100. So if this is true, then it will return a 1. And let's ask the question, starting from 1, how many times do we need to shift it to the left so that we'll get the number 8? When we shift it by 2, we got a 4. So if we shift it to the left one more time, then we'll get an 8. So shift this to the left by 3. And the rest of the code remains the same. I've updated the rest of the code to use assembly. The only changes that I made are the numbers that are being compared and the number of time that I have to shift over to the left. Otherwise, the code is the same. So let's deploy this contract and give it a try. I'll call most significant bit with two examples, calling it with 0 and calling it with max unit, 2 to the 256 minus 1. So I'll hit Control S to compile a contract and then deploy the contract. And then let's call it with 0 and we expect the result to be equal to zero. Okay, next let's call it with max uint. We expect the result to be 255. Paste max uint and then call most significant bit. And the result is 255. How much gas does it say? Here I have two contracts. Both have the same functions, most significant bit. This is the function that we had before we rewrote it in assembly. And this is the assembly form of the same function which I have deployed over here. So let's call most significant bit using the function form. And then later we'll call the assembly form and then compare the gas cost. So open the function form and we'll call most significant bit with max uint, which I've commented out here, paste it, call it, and let's get the gas cost. The gas cost of calling this function is 24,067. I'll copy this and then paste it here. Function used up 24,067 guess. Next, let's call the same function with the same input using the assembly form. So open the assembly form, paste it, call it, and then get the cost of the guess, 22,488. So assembly used up 
22,488 gas. Just to estimate, you can see that the assembly farm saved about 1,500 gas.